The Armed Forces Covenant is a promise between the government, local authorities and veterans that when they leave the forces they will be given priority housing and mental health care. But there's an estimated 7,000 homeless veterans currently lying on Britain's streets and many more are suffering from the effects of chronic post-traumatic stress disorder. Most of the people on the street think that we are looking after our, our veterans and when you see some of the things that are going on, the, the homelessness, uh, well it, obviously we're not. And if one veteran is homeless then there's a problem. The problem we have with the military covenant is Parts of it need to be changed so that priority is given all of the time to our armed forces veterans instead of every now and again or whenever the council feels like it. Now we have been told by the government that this problem doesn't exist. Well I can tell you, speaking to these people, speaking to these charities, this is a very real problem on our streets. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. It was a dark time for me, it was a time that um, let, let uh, you know, wanted to take my own life. We've still got 30 years of veterans on the streets and obviously going back down to World War II as well um, because I've actually dealt with here anywhere from age 16 to 81. So obviously it's obviously different aspects and how people treat them as uh, veterans. We're sleeping out in Manchester, London and Leeds to try and highlight this problem. Official figures show there are between 7,000 and 8,000 homeless veterans across Britain. That number seems very high, but I've spoken to people I knew who were in the armed forces, and they actually thought the figure was much higher. We'd heard stories of veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder begging their local authority for housing and help, and being turned away. But could it really be true that the British government would make promises to men and women who've risked their life for Queen and country, and then break those promises? Promises like guaranteeing them priority housing and mental health care. In a country like Britain, with such a proud military history, is it really the case that vulnerable, brave military heroes are given the cold shoulder instead of the help that they desperately need? OK, David Chair, we are on the streets of London. What sort of work do you carry out when you're out there looking for homeless veterans? Yeah, that's a good question, Mike. Um, basically, what we, what we have to do is we have to verify that any homeless person we come across is definitely a service person. Whether it's male or female, it doesn't matter whether they served in Army, Navy, RAF, it doesn't matter. Once we've verified by asking some basic questions, we then go away and we will check to make sure that that person has actually served in the armed forces of this country. Once again, once we've got that verification, almost immediately, we will take that person off the street, we will put them into temporary accommodation, which will be a B&B &B or even a hotel, um, until we can actually get the veteran to their local authority, to their local councils, and that is when um, we can then use everything that's available to make sure that the veteran is being seen under the correct legislation. London was first on the agenda, and walking around alongside UKIP's Mike Hookham, military campaigner Dennis Grimes, and veterans charity worker David Woods, it wasn't long before we found one of the many veterans sleeping rough on the capital streets. You were in the military for a few years, were you? Five and a half years, I was in. And what, yeah. what were you doing when you were there then? What was your, what was your thing? I went to Afghanistan, I was in Limpstone, Plymouth, Devon. Yeah? Yeah. And, uh, and then how long ago did you, did you come out then? I've I come out March the 21st because I was ill, man. Post traumatic stress is all, not it? How have you found, what, how easy was it for you to find help when you needed it most? None. And all yeah. I've been doing is subsidising the back hole. I've collapsed here about 10 times. I mean, I've got to that. have an operation on my leg. Mm -hmm. to get, uh, What's wrong I've with your leg then? I've got metal. I've got you got, shrapnel. You got shrapnel. shrapnel on my leg, yeah. Where was that from then? That's from the way, uh, obviously... I when you were serving, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. serving and that. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. It's got uh, I've got, I've got, yeah. I've got it all there, Oh, fuck me, mate. Yeah, I've got it in my back as well. Went through that, that, but it's all stuck in. Look at my legs. Yeah, it's Yeah. Do you know what it feels? You know what? Like, one minute I'm up, next minute I'm down. One minute I'm crying, next minute I'm laughing. But I mean, and, 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 and that's what you suffer from, don't yeah. you? Know? This is nothing new, what we do with our young men and women. Uh, we take them into the armed forces. We, we draw all their youth out of them to, to fight and to, to serve. And then once, once you're left with the, 
husk, if you like, of this person. Yeah. Uh, when they're no longer useful, we just say goodbye, that's it, we don't want to know. I mean, do you feel a bit like we've, we've highlighted tonight the job that really the government should be doing themselves? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, absolutely. As, yeah. as, as David said, we've, we've highlighted that there is a problem out there, that there is veterans on the street, even though the government are saying to us that, uh, that they've got it covered uh, and there isn't a problem. After a night out in London, it was off to Leeds where I met up with former homeless veteran Mark Smith. He'd suffered with PTSD after several years of service and ended up losing his house and living rough outside his local cricket club for a while. So, uh, so you used to uh, call this home for a little while then, did you? I did, yeah. It was uh, 14 years ago I found myself homeless. Um, trying to get myself sorted out and that was uh, quite a long process. Yeah. I mean, trying to find somewhere to live, trying to find somewhere safe and that just to sleep and that. Um, for the few months that I was homeless, um, I found myself here, it's one of the places. So you were saying that, that sometimes when you got really hungry and things got desperate, you know, you used to, you used to have the odd meal out of these bins and things. I well. did. There's a few occasions where, from the cricket club here and that, they used to have venues on, you know, like events, um, nice. uh, christenings, wedding anniversaries, things like that, where uh, I could get a meal out of the bins yeah, at the end of the those night. Ones there, yeah. Them ones there, yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's bringing back memories is this one now, yeah. <laughs> I used to sleep in the stands behind us there for, for nice. a few times and that, and, and the various other places around Morley. Just down here, basically, where all these bottles are and stuff, there was a uh, whole burnt out car, see, it was yeah. burnt out, it was half, half burnt out. The front yeah. end was all gone and that, but the back end where I could get in and, and sleep. Put so you sleep head down. In, in the car? I'd sleep in the car, yeah. Now, a lot of the veterans that I've worked with that, that have been homeless and that prefer to be rural. They mm. don't prefer or they would rather not be in the, the city centres. Mm. Um, especially if you're looking at them with, uh, with mental health issues, including PTSD. Um, being around people and that, it's just, it's just not something that's, that they're comfortable with. Yeah. And for myself in particular, I used to prefer to be on my own in, mm. in places like this. I mean, this, this has a massive knock-on effect for the figures though, doesn't it? Because obviously nationally, the, the government and, and various charities say there's about 7,000 homeless veterans, yeah. but they don't actually quantify the guys like you that are on your own in the woods and yeah. on, on your own rurally. And you work with plenty of guys that, that are like that. So, I mean, the figures could potentially be quite misleading, the ones that are out there at the minute. I believe so, definitely. Um, it's like the old adage for crime figures and stuff. A lot of crimes don't get reported. Mm. And this is just the same as veterans and that. A lot of the veterans in statistics that, that are more rural and that aren't reported within the figures. The figures are taken from shelters, yeah. from um, associations, from, you know, from all these other organisations and that. It doesn't take into account those that aren't getting help, that aren't, uh, aren't able to get to help. After surviving a night out on the streets of Leeds, the final stop was Manchester, where I met up with David Wotherspoon. He'd slept rough in Manchester for a couple of years after leaving the forces and described how difficult it had been for him. What's it like that first night when you're actually homeless? It's really difficult to describe how alone in the world you feel. Uh, you real, really do feel disconnected from society, totally. The only people you can really even think about talking to are people that are obviously homeless themselves and they'll know that you're a newbie and so you want to keep your mouth shut you want to say nothing to no one you want to keep your own counsel it's frightening uh, I'm streetwise I'm not soft uh, but I knew to keep myself to myself and was very guarded and when you put your sleeping bag down for the first time and you said you know you're waking up a lot in the night and stuff like that I mean that process that's going on in your head when you, you're getting jolted awake in the night and you re keep remembering where you are, you know, how does that feel? Well, you're sleeping with one eye open as well because you're wary of attack. Uh, you're aware, wary of drunken uh, piss pots coming past, spotting you, deciding to have a go because it'll be funny. Manchester has a big homelessness problem and Squaddy Dave is a prime example of the thousands of veterans who suffered mental health problems as a result of their service but have simply been cast adrift by the government. I joined the army in uh, 1988, late 88 to 93, uh, done just over four years in the Guards Regiment, 2nd Battalion Grenadier Guards, based in Caterham Barracks down Surrey. Um, nice life, really enjoyed it. Um, stayed in Northern Ireland, Canada, um, had a bit of a nervous breakdown from the tour of Ireland. Um, come out of the army, had various jobs from forklift truck driving to uh, warehouse work, basically. Lancashire cricket, ground keeping. I've had various little jobs, but nothing really long term and never really settled ever since he had my nervous breakdown. Life on the street every day, mate. 
Uh, I'm getting up at the morning, I get woke up at half past five by a cleaner, dustpan and brush and mop sort of business. I'm on a window ledge on the Unitarian church outside a church and sleeping on a church window ledge. I feel I've got my back to the church, safe, and I'm fighting half of Manchester city centre. That's including street homeless, the police, Biffa bin men who take tents, sleeping bags and any sort of bit of tat what's left about. Um, an umbrella which was on the window ledge where to stay um, was protecting my legs from rain yeah, because where the shelter are, basically my legs are out a little bit. So I've got an umbrella, protecting my, legs. my umbrella got set on fire, hence uh, dripping plastic. I woke up, um, luckily I was very lucky, I would have had third degree burns from my knee down to my ankles without a doubt. Uh, that was one incident, I'm getting threatened on a weekly basis. Take that as like just part of part of the terror story, man. You know, it's just all the time verbal. But in the middle of the night, one, two, three o'clock in the morning, people do come and visiting you. They do come and kicking and they do come and screaming. It is a hard place, Manchester at night. Homeless. It's horrible. It's not nice whatsoever. This was only going to be my third night on the streets, and I'm not ashamed to admit that it was already getting a bit much for me. But the fact is, men and women who have fought for Britain, men and women who have suffered the horrors of war for Britain, do this every single night. It's horrible. You can't express how vulnerable you feel. Anything could happen at any time. You feel like, like anyone could just come around the corner and do whatever they wanted to. I'm on my own, you know, in an hour. It's scary to be honest, mate. I'm quite scared about it. I've been, I've been dreading it all day, all day. It's, 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 every minute was another minute closer to me having to sleep. Well, I've not been looking forward to it. Well, I think uh, a lot more needs to be done to get local authorities to engage with the Armed Forces Covenant as prescribed by central government. This is a real problem. These people are, are out there, many of them suffering, as I said, with uh, alcohol addiction, drugs or PTSD. They're out there, they need our help. And I believe that this shouldn't be, although these charities are very laudable and, and good at what they do, I don't believe that this should be down to a charity. This should be down to the government. The government's asked these people to put their lives on the line, put themselves in harm's way. When they leave the services, I believe that the government should pick up the tab and they should be out there looking after the veterans. I would love to see, and I think Theresa May and her government must put this into, into action, a veterans minister and also on the lines of the the american armed forces and the american people who actually cherish their their veterans a veterans association a one-stop shop for veterans when they leave the armed forces government please stop going on about money spend it where it's needed spend it very wisely use your think tanks properly just get it done man it's happening in every city up and down the country it's easily done you've got the money just please do it people you have to do it ex guardsmen talking. Queenie, sort it out. What we've seen during the last few nights of sleeping rough across Britain is the true, undeniable extent of veteran homelessness. The Armed Forces Covenant is currently not fit for purpose and 7,000 or more homeless veterans are on the streets not getting the care they need for their PTSD and other mental health problems. This is leading to other issues. We've seen people be the victim of horrific, violent crimes on the streets and heard about people whose sleeping bags have been sat on fire, suffering third degree burns. This is awful in a first world country and it has to stop.